Welcome back to Lost World. So now we're finally out of the cave maze. Let's actually try to get to some of the other ma missions. If I remember correctly, we're f from the first one we're going to do is uh, yeah, I think it is. Oh hey, boy, is a dope. river! Of I know, right? All right, so we're going. The next mission we're going to do is actually T-Rex Chase. So you guys will be able to see for yourselves exactly what it is in a moment. Okay. <laughs> Basically, mommy's very angry, so run the fuck away. What did you do to anger her? Well, oh, wait, right, may have taken down her husband and tranked her son, if not killed him. Exactly. This is interesting because there's actually going to be a later mission that involves uh, collecting T-Rex eggs. So, possible reference to the movie, maybe? Hmm. Well, let's be honest, T-Rexes are like... Um, T-Rexes are probably the most famous type there you go. of dinosaurs you T-Rex chase. Get. Huh. So let's see what it is exactly. Okay, you must drive quickly and carefully to avoid the rampaging T-Rex. Yay, thanks for that mission control. In here I would have thought I was supposed to drive towards the T-Rex. So yeah, once you cross that, that there you go. Oh, the the, the T-Rex actually up, and now he's constantly chasing you, and oh, he kills you one hit if you... It literally stomped you flat. Alright, let's try again. Alright, so that's exactly it. You have that meter on the top that tells you how far you are from the goal, so just keep driving and don't stop, otherwise you're doomed. Uh, thank I goodness this jeep can jump! I can see how this is different from the... not isometric, but you know, the back view uh, boss fight that we had. Yeah, fortunately you're co so long, sucker! It's a good thing the car is uh, faster than the... Uh, well, okay, to be fair, that actually does go in line with the... Um, with what the movie is in the movie, because according to... Faster. According to the first movie, the T-Rex is run at... Was it 50 miles per hour that he said? Oh, I forgot. Uh, I think well, we need mentioning. It, it's, definitely so, it's, it's definitely slower than a car at max speed, though. So I guess, so I technically, yeah, this is... I think he said they clocked it at 30 miles per hour. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, T-Rex Chase is nothing uh, super amazing. Uh, a as long as you keep your pedal to the metal and you try your best to avoid stuff, it's not that problematic. You can just get through it fine I enough. I feel like they could have added a layer to like you're luring the T-Rex into a trap or whatnot, but no, your mission is literally just run the heck away Again, from the Joe, but I think because of the, the scope of the game, they did add limitations of, in some kind of fashion. Probably somebody... Like this. Probably... I feel like this Go mission on. should have come before the T-Rex boss fight. Yeah, like that, that, now, that, that's a good point, yeah. If this lead into the T-Rex boss fight, like, then I feel like that would have worked. Mm -hmm. Especially since you're in the Jeep for that fight anyway. I feel like uh, the one of the developers had a... Oh, we well, had an, a mission where we're running away from a T-Rex. Uh, uh, on, on a proper level, and I'm like... And, and the, 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 the developers really liked it, so they placed it there regardless of context, basically. Um, like again, now, like I said, if this were preceding the boss fight with the T-Rex, then that would be just mm -hmm. fine. Because, yeah, the that boss fight is more or less us running away from the T-Rex while taking it down. Yeah. Anyway, this is Camp Sabotage, the final mission of uh, Isla Sorna Free. Um, okay, so, as the name implies, you have to find enemy camps, but these guys specifically, and destroy them. That's the basic gist of it. There are four enemy camps. Locate them and blow them up. With all the people inside them. <laughs> if you want, well, wild webs. To be fair, it's not like they're not. They're, it's not like they're being friendly themselves. So, not to mention we're kinda maybe the bad guys in this game. Kinda maybe, oh, possibly. So, uh, so based on to, to what you're saying, Pedro, it's like Golden Eye Rogue Agents before Golden Eye Rogue Agents. Sure, if that helps you. Basically, in that game, you play as a. Um, you play as a bad guy in in the Bond universe, and, and it has the most weird plot ever. Um, you play as a as a man codenamed Golden Eye because he actually has a golden eye because he lost it after Doctor No shot it, and um, he gets fired from MI6 after a training exercise, and um, and, and he teams up with uh, Goldfinger, who's at a war with Doctor No. 
Mm -hmm. That's the weirdest James Bond fan fiction I've ever heard. Um, and basically, yeah, basically instead of well, uh, and there are it's basically your web MI6 but evil. The leader is Goldfinger. <laughs> Instead of Q being your gadget master, it's Scaramanga, which, I mean, it makes sense, you know, he he makes stuff, and, he, and it, I think it's actually the only time Christopher Lee ever reprised the role. Hmm. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I'm starting to think that the people, that uh, the guys at Appaloosa played Ultima 4, sorry, Ultima 4, Ultima 8, sorry. Um, yeah, I did mention it. There's a, there's a, there's a concerning amount of uh, exploding uh boxes and barrels in this game even so. sometimes clashing with the ai for those who don't know ultimate was very very poorly optimized um meaning that a lot of features were actually either missing or unfinished one of them is putting at the very least suspected uh, during his review is the idea of how chest works i think treasure chest works the idea behind it that some chest might be booby trapped uh, you know, so it's not always a guarantee. Um, and by this, true that some of the chests in that game, uh, you know, still do not uh, um, do not explode. Most of them do. And even if you actually manage to defuse or lockpick correctly them, which is a project process that it's overly complicated for a game like Ultima 8, the chest still explodes because fuck you. <laughs> All right. So the, by camp, what they mean is the actual satellites that are in the camp, because apparently, supposedly, we're trying to prevent them from uh, transmitting. Calling reinforcement. All right, three more to destroy. You can also take down the actual tent and the jeep, but it doesn't. There you go. Just to give you guys an idea of how it is. There you go. It just explodes. Um. Yeah, basically. That being uh, that tail, uh, and of course the weird, weird focus on platforming. Yeah, like it. That, that that's the that was that's what was me the most personally. The well, fact that well, they made until that point, uh, Ultima has never been about platforming. Uh, it's no, been mostly about uh, an isometric RPG with a puzzle solving component, basically. Yeah, but for Ultima Eight, for whatever bewildering reason, they decided uh, platforming, and by platforming, I mean. Point, oh, but, and, and by platforming I mean I use platforming loosely because what you actually do and that's in the CD version is point and click at the platform and he will jump to it and that's the, the good version technically quote unquote because the original the floppy disk version even worse. Didn't, didn't even you had to actually properly jump and it was terrible because the controls were awful so oh well all right, let's continue. Yeah, the, there you go. See the Java. There's another the um, missile um, box that you get from there. So you you, you should be fine in terms when it comes to ammo. Okay. Oh, there you go. See another another mm -hmm. case of uh, enemy hunters that have missiles with them. <laughs> Jesus. I guess they're getting smarter somehow. And homing missiles uh, of, of all things. So. It's also a good idea to salvage on missiles if you uh, 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 if you don't have. Oh, there you go. See, you can also. Oh, you. Thank you, dude. <laughs> Those missiles home in on us, and you were able to trick the missile into hitting the generator. Yeah. Again. I uh, guess that comes in handy in case you run out of. Uh, it does. That's missiles. Pro that's probably why the developers put those specific missile carrying enemies in this bit. Probably. Probably. Again. Uh, Again, for the again, the this game is surprisingly the, the the developers surprisingly thought of thought of thought of quite a lot of things. <laughs> like I tell you, sometimes it can be frustrating when a game needs you to have a weapon that the enemies have, and then when they shoot the thing, it does nothing. So you have to possess the weapon yourself. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a game that does away with that malarkey before open world stuff was even really a thing. Yeah, that's what that's what's most impressive to me in particular, the fact that this game is way better than it has any right to be when you consider the time it was made in the circumstances. I always do have a thing for games that allow you to trick enemies into attacking fellow enemies or tricking them into damaging the environment for you. For me, that and for me, the biggest appreciation point is the the beautiful uh, human AI that this game has. That, that to me is just the gift that keeps on giving. No matter how many minds, <laughs> no matter how many minds there are, they just keep walking right into them and it's just beautiful. 
<laughs> uh, it's not even a matter of those owls. Like uh, in in the in the defend transport mission, they would just put a mine and then walk into said mine. Whereas in uh, whereas in the previous one, they literally just uh, showed up, walk right into the mine and die. And I'm just like, and I'm just sitting there going, huh? Well, <laughs> that happened. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's see. Again, you can um, use the map to locate where the satcoms are, so you should be fine. There you go. There's one. There's the other one. And if I remember correctly, the third one should be. Actually, did I even? Maybe I missed it. I don't think I destroyed the the second one already. All right. Okay, we have the map now, so we should be able to find them just fine. But for now, let's. Oh. Okay, barrier. Let's see if barrier. we can... Barrier. Yes, barrier. Um, barrier! Fortunately, we can look at generators too. So let's see what the where generators are. Um, mm. The hunter barrier is approaching the generator. Still... The generator is losing power. All right, so there's two generators fairly close to each other. So... And there's still no sign of those 3DS and PS Vita ports. <laughs> At this point, I'm pretty confident to say that uh, we will never see Again, them. Have the to ah, say that. beautiful! Just... Fucking! He literally ran through the electronic generator, even though he could have gone around it. That guy has balls. <laughs> oh look, an electrical. Mean that oh look, an electrical bear. I'm just gonna walk straight right into it. What could possibly go wrong? Y'all know. Uh, apparently nothing. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. I, I love these enemies. Uh, again, like, uh, these... Uh, um, no no wonder... Um, no wonder the, the villains in Lost World end up winning. Like, uh, if this is their opposition, I mean... <laughs> I wonder, honestly. What if these hunters are actually just dinosaurs that evolved into humans and learned sure, how to use guns? Well... Like, well, well technically, your thinking pattern. well, scientifically speaking, Jovo, all of us are that. So. <laughs> oh, don't you see? These ones are escaped experiments that donned clothes of the oh. moon and tried to oh, so hide it's, among us. Is it kind of like, uh, is it kind of like a reverse of the villain of Cadillacs and Dinosaurs? Or something? Oh, yes. uh, I guess so. All right, so another, another new gimmick that this level introduces is the lasers, and uh, if you go by those lasers, you call enemy reinforcements, so be careful not to trap into those lasers. Um, and that's basically it. The, there's not that much to it, and considering how up, 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 uh, ridiculously stupid the human AI is in this game, you don't have to worry. Uh, uh, also, did, I, did, did you notice how the enemies now for some reason... Yeah, the enemies for some reason at some point start fighting amongst each other. Did you notice how that enemy hunter threw a grenade at the bunker? Like, okay, uh, either, either it bugged out for a second, or there is an ideal program of potentially some enemy, enemies attacking each other. It's not too unthinkable for the setting, to be honest. Yeah, this is as far as I can tell, all these enemy hunters are part of the same faction. I mean, I mean, the, true, the game never specifies anything, but I always assumed it. But in this case, it might have just bugged out. It, it's just again, it's a fi the, the this human AI just keeps on giving. <laughs> uh, it really is wondrous. All right, let's continue. All right, I could use some money, so. There you go. Now the ba now the basic gist of it, Webs, is that if you tranquilize the dinos instead of killing them, you get coins, which are in shape of the Jurassic Park logo, uh, and you can trade them for ammo, like I just did. So that's the basic gist of it. All right. So, so um, in oh, this world, if we die, what do we turn into? Uh, food. Any? I guess. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. Uh, you see, Webs. When we die, our body turns to grass, and then the antelopes eat the grass. All right, all right, and then the, the, the herb of war dinosaurs eat the grass. And so, we are all connected in the great circle of life. How's that? Well, what happens if the meat eaters get to us first? Then we're stomped to death. Then, then I guess we're fucked. <laughs> the circle go. of life. Okay. You know, there actually is a movie called The Dinosaur King. 
That's it because that is based on a video game, a, a Sega IP of all things. Also, the enemy hunter just went through the laser and, acti and activated the alarm on his own. So, yeah, I, just, I, saw so I guess, so I guess technically that was a smart move because then it attracts the rest of the guys to us. I guess. I guess that's the idea. Well, well, jo well, Jova, if you keep throwing shit at the wall, oh, eventually one of the turds will stick. So. <laughs> well, congrats, Yemenea. You finally did something right. All right. Moving on. Uh... I still think special mention goes to the guys who valiantly tried to stop a giant truck with just by running their into bodies. it. <laughs> yes, that's. The... <laughs> no, no. Well, that, that while that is good to me, it doesn't get any better than in that same in that same level. The guy placing a mine and literally immediately right after walking right into it. That to me is just the pinnacle of stupidity. <laughs> Honestly, we have to wonder who's going to win the competition for the Darwin Awards by the end of this game. What about uh, what about that bit in the um, yeah, that bit in the Super Mario Brothers Super Show where one of the uh, bad guys jumps off a train holding a bomb? Yeah. And up? All right. I'm not even sure that counts as an animation error because that show was chock full of animation errors. It well, that's the thing too. I mean, it was from Dick Entertainment. That's the thing too. Like uh, that show is so ridiculous, ridiculous and insane that it's that it's hard to even distinguish between an animation error or in an intentional gag. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, right. <laughs> Like for example, uh, uh, like the clock where they say the clock that it's it's it, like it's uh, it's like two minutes, even though it shows like ten or however long it is. Um, so it, it's. Oh kind God, if you, if you're looking for um, if you're looking for films in which the makers of it don't know how to count, look no further than Robocop Three. <laughs> well, it's Frank Miller. What did you expect? Oh, and also Fred Decker, because, uh, because uh, Jova, uh, the director of Robocop 3 might be familiar to you. Decker, Decker. Fred Decker, he co-wrote uh, The Predator. Mm-hmm. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah. You know, <sighs> you know, you know, that's the thing, though. For all these years, up until, um, up until the release of The Predator, a lot of people were saying, oh, yeah, Fred Decker's actually a good filmmaker. He was just screwed over a lot. But after The Predator came out, those comments seem to have gotten a lot more rare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, all a matter of, it's all a matter of perspective. Because, you know, again, I guess a good example is Frank Miller. Believe it or not, Frank Miller was, at some point, a very talented writer here and there. And he a lot was. of people thought, you know, his flukes were just flukes. It's just that, you know, when they got older and crankier, things started to become more apparent, let's just say. Now, apparently... Yeah, so, Jonah, again, some of these uh, early comics still have uh, the kind of messages that he put even in his later ones, like even Robocop vs. The Terminator is a good example of that. But it feels they not even have a justification, but it feels at least the setting tries to compensate and still tell a good story at the end of the day. You know? Exactly. Stuff like The Dark Knight uh, uh, Strikes Again and especially Holy Terror Ugh. feels just a rant, or an awful rant it, about, yeah. uh, about these ideologies. So. It's one of those things Pretty where much. it's one of those things where even his ma like even Dark Knight Returns, which was regarded as his masterpiece, even that uh comic like when Kara put it very well even that comic has quite a bit of wrong things with it like the, the, the stupid commentary about the cold war what the cold what the fuck does the cold war have to do with batman like it... <laughs> wasn't um, wasn't batman create when was batman created the 40s the 40s dwips well i mean the cold war started in the 40s so but yeah okay, but, but this comic was released in 1980 Five was even it? The, even in uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold Even so, um, even during the weird wackiness of the Silver Age, Batman was one of the characters that barely interacted with anything Soviet-related. Um, but um, the only major exception is, of course, the Superman Red Song, because that's an Elseworlds story to begin with. That poses the question: What if? Uh, 
the spaceship with Kalel inside actually landed in, so- in the Soviet Russia instead of, uh, you know, in Kansas. Yeah. And that the cult- causes, uh, you know, a, that version of Bruce Wayne, that equivalent of Batman, which operates in the Soviet Union. Well, the Cold War lasted till, um, till 91 when the Soviet Union fell apart. It's more so, Debs, that uh, uh, The Dark Knight Returns was a story about how Batman, after being retired, r- comes back and tries to save the city he loves, uh, now, even though he's old now. And instead of, just, instead of just being just that, which when it's focusing on that, it's great, but then we have a lot of, uh, basically, it was, you know those bits in BVS where th- there's a lot of news anchors t- commenting on the, the, the real-life implications of superheroes and shit like that? That's basically taken from The Dark Knight Returns, where Frank Miller also does that all shit a lot in The Dark Knight Returns. And, the, and, the, the, and even though some of it is about Batman... A lot of times, the new the new the news anchor segments in that comic go completely off the rails and just talk about completely irrelevant shit. <laughs> so it, it is basically just Frank Miller's soapbox for providing his quote unquote commentary. There you go. See that player character right there. That's uh, that's the one that looks like it's kind of based on Ian Malcolm. Kind of. He has the sunglasses and everything. So. Mm. Oh wow! I, I remember that bit very clearly from uh, the movie. Where Ian Malcolm gets blown up by a random hunter. Yes. Little did you know, this is actually the the, um, the alternate script for Lost World. But uh, but but that doesn't make any sense. How come he gets blown up here, and yet in Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom, he's perfectly alive? Because life finds a way. That, that's not really a Malcolm, which would probably be a better Malcolm. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's the plot twist. He's not actually here, Malcolm, he's his brother. Uh, oh god, I, I seriously hope that the third movie doesn't push even more the idea of human clones to say, oh, maybe the the actual, you know, the team that went to Islam Ubla all back in the day died and these are clone replacement. <laughs> Can you even imagine? If uh, you just have like to that? ask why at that point. I mean, I mean, it was, I mean, oh! Know. I mean, it would probably be the most hilarious moment in all the series. Thank you for doing uh, um, for the, the reactions. Reason, still. The reactions would be hilarious, probably. Another one. But another yeah, one yeah. Suggest. I mean, that's like that's like the only way at this point. That's like the only way you could be there worse. That's, it, that's the only way you could be worse than free at this point. Indeed. Yeah. All right, so that's all. all. Right, mission completed. So that's all the free missions complete. So time for the boss stage. All right. And so it's, it we talked about a raft. raft. River raft. Yes. Instead of uh, the previous two uh, boss stages where it was a more straight fight against a specific dinosaur, uh, river raft is decided. Uh, here, the developers decided to mix things up. Instead of being a traditional boss fight, it's more so an endurance run when you're shooting various uh, dinosaurs and other and avoiding hazards while uh, going down the river. As I, you're... Thought, I thought we were gonna fight Vince Vaughn. No, sorry, this. You must fend off all attackers as you travel on the river raft. Avoid and shoot all enemies. Watch out for falling rocks. Which for because for some it's reason a very common while you descend to yes, rafting a river. Yes, but, oh. yes, for some reason Wait. it's raining rocks. Okay, oh my god, fair, that second guy does look like Ian. Yeah, he does Ian. look a bit. Uh, although, he seems to be having more the, the haircut of the first movie rather than, you know, because for some reason they decided to shave Jeff Goldblum for the second movie. Oh god, I can imagine it now. Hey, I said, remember what I said, life finds a way? I lied. Life finds a way. <laughs> that reminds um, me, actually. I don't think I've actually. Well, with this environment, I actually understand why we'll be falling rocks. Uh, it's more of a, of a river inside, like a gorge, and the, the two, you know, the two sides are like the ca- a rock canyon rock formations. Uh, I think that's why we're falling rocks. Uh, mm-hmm. Still a bit weird. Uh, go on, Pedro. Sorry. I just, I'm guessing the go on. I'm guessing the idea is like was that this guy who's shooting is normally the second player character who would be with you. And you would be correct, Jova. Yes. Um. Okay, actually, which reminds me, I haven't actually explained something about the boss battles. Okay, as I said, in co-op, you are playing the levels with a co-op partner. What about the bosses, you may, you may, you may ask? The bosses also work in co-op mode. Basically, if you're playing the first boss on co-op, one of you drives and the other one throws the grenades. Um, if you're playing the, tri- the T-Rex boss battle in co-op, one of you, um, uh, one of you uses 
the, the like uh, the, the little thingy that um, that you're hanging out the chair you know from the jeep as well mm -hmm. as driving the the car into the fence when t-rex is ready and the other one shoots for this one one of you drives the raft as in you know dodging rocks and everything uh while the other one shoots however if you're playing on your own as i am it's simple uh if when you're not pressing the shooting button you can uh, use the right uh, the d-pad to um, uh, move around you can jump and all that shit if you're holding the shooting button down then the 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 raft will lock and you'll just be able to shoot in every direction so basically just keep alternating between the two modes basically so the so uh, the, is this where it takes two guns inspiration from uh maybe <laughs> i mean the co-op the co-op mode of this game works pretty much like uh um, oh, yeah the co-op mode in this game pretty much works like one of one of uh, one of his games so it could you could potentially be yeah maybe yeah wait please all right no are we doing co-op right now no we're not you can see in Virgil that the fact that the gun, when when the raft is moving the the direction of the gun is moving as well mm-hmm but uh, I also gotta love how because of probably sprite, sprite flickering for optimization purposes, when you start shooting in a direction, the projectile starts slightly before the character actually turns. <laughs> yes. Are those like piranhas in the water that keep popping out? Some of our yes. piranhas, some of our the, the small, uh, I think they're supposed to be... No, I don't, I don't think they are Celtetics. Uh, no, I don't think they are supposed to be. As for the, the, the crocodile ask, I don't think it's an Ethiosaurus, uh, but probably close to that, uh, I think. Uh, again, Lovely river ride this is. So. Either way, uh, in the top right corner, you have the progress meter, so basically when it's all the way up, you're done. It's interesting awesome. how it's shaped like a, like a timer, as if instead it's supposed to be a time mission. They literally made a boat out of logs and just decided, yep, this is what's safe to roll down on an island filled with dinosaurs. If only, if only this was on, um, it's less so on that, then they would have approved the part. If I remember correctly, okay, this might be... Didn't they do that Jurassic Park 3? Well, even, well, no, even, that wasn't that wasn't Isla Sauna Jet, but that was a new one. Uh, no, 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 But um, Jurassic that, Park Three is still in. Um, no, no, that's actually the same island as Jurassic Park Two. And that and one Park used 3. a bow, a proper bow, rather than a raft. If I remember correctly, I think while not necessarily constructing a raft. Something similar to this actually happens in the first book. Um, at some point, if I recall correctly, after the sequence between the movies represented by uh, Dr. Grant and the two children climbing up the fence, the active fence, if I recall correctly, after that, they do have a sequence where, in order to escape one of the T Rexes, they used um, either a raft or a pre existing boat on the river. So it might be slightly inspired by that. All right. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, basically when you're at the later part, yeah, they the game the, the level starts throwing crap at you. But again, it's all very well made. Like as long as you have quick reflexes, you should be fine. Like and like I said, the life bar is relatively forgiving. Like uh, you can uh, you can afford to get hit quite a few times and still survive. So it's not like the thing. Yeah, there you go. We're done. All right. Late million cover. Um, is that was that the box office for this film? <laughs> Except, all right. Try this password. Have fun. Red Basically, Hunter. this allows you to play w with the Red Hunter that we saved in the first cave level as your player avatar character. Um, all right. Uh, now we've done. We've reached the final Isla Sorna site. Site four. So tune in for that next time. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. See ya. Yep.